flustered. So start with some yellow ochre to create some nice French sunshine. And we'll bring that down over the buildings, go for some nice warmth on those. Before it dries at the top here, let's get some blue on there. You'll notice that my palette is not clean at all. But, um, the leftover paint will just uh, mix into these blues and yellows and things and just make them more sort of natural looking colours rather than sort of bright colours straight from the tube. And the water, bring that down. So that's going to be reflecting some of that warmth. And then we'll finish with the blue. So you'll notice that's very similar to a lot of other paintings I've done. And, you know, I find that a lot of my watercolours, they're all much the same. Just different subject. The, the actual method of painting doesn't really change a great deal. So we'll need to let that dry. So I can switch to smaller brush. So this is an Escoda Perla size 14. It's a, a new one, so it's got a nice fine point. So I think we'll go for putting some blue on the shadow parts of the, the buildings. So I need to make a decision which way the sun is going to come. So I'll say the sun is coming in from this direction. So sometimes it's not a bad idea just to put an arrow on your masking tape just to remind yourself so shadows will be coming off this way so perhaps we'll have some of these buildings in shadow so this brush is nicely loaded up and the rooftops will be orange so the the blue and the orange is going to work well together and then i can connect up all of these um, buildings and we'll have a good uh, mixture of warmth and cool. So maybe a bit of burnt, burnt sienna. So maybe we'll have a bit of warmth on that building. That's going to mix on there. It'll just give us a little bit of a texture that could be stone. Um, but this side of the building is going to be in shadow. And on that one, so a bit of warmth maybe. So the sun's maybe creating a bit of a light on those, but we'll darken that once it's dried. Um, we'll continue with that warmth over on this side, just to make it interesting. So maybe this one's got a lot of warmth on it because that's getting the sunshine on it. So back to the blue, but notice I'm mixing on the paper rather than uh, just mixing the color and so on because we need to add connection and staying with a fairly limited palette that um, you know the orange and the blue you know, we don't need masses of colors and we'll have that as a rooftop there this is kind of going off the page here so don't need much in the way of detail there let me just suggest there so I've come down here and I've got um, trees to go in. So I think I'll put the trees in now while this is all wet because it's an opportunity maybe just to connect a few things up, um, certainly over here. So let's go for a bit of yellow ochre and a bit of cobalt blue. So fairly strong paint. And this dark will make these uh, rooftops seem lighter when I put the uh, the nice orange on there and a bit of dry brush just to create the uh, illusion of treetops and so on and I can use the uh, 
the dark there just to sort of come around that rooftop and make a little bit more of that and to add connection let's just pull a dark under that rooftop there and I'm just using that green which I've made so the yellow ochre and the cobalt blue make a nice sort of natural looking green and same under that one same under that one maybe mix a bit of red red and blue so just making a slightly darker color so we can put a shadow down there maybe actually put some of that in there as well and this side of the building so it's not dried yet so i'll get a probably a soft soft edge there so i can always sharpen that up afterwards dark under the eaves there dark under there This is adding connection. Um, so I've not really looked at my reference picture yet, really, a great deal since I've done the drawing. Some windows. And with watercolour, that um, the more you have, you know, you worry about what you're painting and have you got it right and all that sort of stuff, you sacrifice painting loose by doing all of that. I've forgotten this tower up here. Um, because you don't do any of this stuff because you know you're not freeing yourself up to just paint that um it's not as easy as it sounds i know um but uh ideally you don't want to have any worries when you're painting you know particularly you know when you're a beginner you know you're always worried is it going to be any good or you know it's hard enough as it is to um you know, think about what you're doing without sort of adding yourself a little bit of pressure as well. Um, but I sort of stressed about it for uh, you know a long time painting watercolours because it's not easy. So I'm doing a lot of this wet into wet, but it will give you know a nice sort of uh, soft effect and uh, connect all this up. And then I can go back in afterwards and um, you know sharpen up any edges that need to. So again clean washes you know if I can do it with minimal amount of brush marks that just one or two will be much better than five six seven brush marks on there so it's uh, we'll definitely need a little bit of definition and detail in there but, uh, let's get that rooftop there Maybe a few chimney pots just to break up that skyline a little bit there. So I think we'll probably be a good idea to maybe put in uh, some more trees in this foreground while it's wet. But um, you get such good effects when you're painting wet into wet that um, you know it's worth just doing some wet into wet, even if you don't use it in the end and you paint over it. But if it's not there, you can't use it. So it's um, you know, quite good to practice as well. But if I go in dry, when this is dried, and I'll give myself you know some nice hard edges across here. So a nice big tree there. So what we could do is have a go at painting these reflections while this is all still wet and I'll make it wet because like I've done in previous paintings where I've painted the uh, the boats and then the reflections straight away what we don't want to do is have you know the object that's not connected so just some clean water just wet this down here without disturbing it too much and my board's at about a 30 degree angle so we should get a bit of, I'll help it by just pulling it down a little bit. So I want to make these nice and soft. And it's kind of knowing when to sort of stop and uh, stop fiddling. But um, I normally do the a little bit of a, a wash at the end but I can do this now because this is already wet so let's just 
clean that off. And again, this is why watercolour is so difficult because, you know, I didn't really plan how I was going to paint this. That um, I'm just sort of kind of just doing it intuitively. That normally I would have done this at the end, but um, now is a good time to do it. So, you know, let's do it now. So you have to change your plan all the time with watercolour. So this purple will work well with what was there. Not to fiddle with it too much, so a little bit stronger. So I think we'll let that. Well, actually, before we let it dry again, you know, I'm supposed to think about what I'm doing. That it's still just slightly damp here. So if I put these darks in on these windows now, they will soften. Um, whereas if I wait for it to dry, they'll kind of look stuck on. So a bit of brown and blue. So this is real thick paint, almost sort of straight from the tube. So we've got a window there, there. Maybe just put some more of that dark in under there. But a couple of windows there. Again, get that dark under there. Maybe. So this is what I mean by not sacrificing detail for a nice wash. That it's quite nice how this is kind of connected to all these kind of three shapes. But you know, I could go darker with that. But actually, I think it'd be better not to. Um, and just keep that as a um, you know quite a nice wash there. So we'll do that. So there's a window there. Maybe a chimney pot there or something. So windows. Okay, make them all kind of slightly different. They jetty or something there. Um, could possibly go a little bit darker with green while well, this is still damp so again it's just knowing about timing with watercolor it's just damp enough so I could just darken it at the base of that uh, water's edge there but uh, you know a couple of seconds more and it wouldn't it'd be too um too dry so I think we will dry that off now some trees over this side so we'll have a bit of a bit of light maybe add a little bit of a orange glow around those trees a little bit there's not a lot of paint on the, the brush there and now mix some more of that green so this is thick paint not a lot of water and now I can just just create those again sort of marks that could be trees and just a little bit more water it's a little bit just cut around the shapes which will help define those rooftops but maybe I'll just leave a little bit of a, a highlight and again just Painting it simply, these trees, maybe there's a tree goes down behind there. But uh, just make sure I leave plenty of sky holes through there. Stop that one. And we'll just have a slightly higher one there. So that's worked okay. So maybe we've got some. Um, no, not a lot going on in the sky, so put some in there. So 
do need maybe a little bit of um, something in the foreground so maybe a boat that um, we can go for try and lift out some paint thanks Krista appreciate the comments also helps me to let me know that you're there still so I appreciate that so let's put a boat here maybe we've got um, it's quite light here but we'll just let's have a go for just lifting out some some paint just just clean water just work the paper and now just some clean tissue I say it's quite light so it's just enough just to uh, give a little bit of a highlight of the boat and now I can just put the base of the boat maybe the top of the boat and gentleman there rowing rowing his boat and also we're going to need a reflection under there so Take out a little bit of that. As we could add some colour maybe on the boat. Maybe there's some blue would work quite well. So some cerulean blue straight from the tube. Just put a bit of detail on that boat. boat and we could just put a couple of boats by the uh, the, the jetty there and then that'll be finished maybe a couple of figures Let's get on that boat maybe it's always good to try and tell a story Stuff around there. The softness now I'm fiddling, so that's time to call it a day on that one. But um, something like this would be a good idea to have a look at it again tomorrow and see, you know, could we add something to it? So we'll have a look at the the other scene. So that was the first one so there we go um we'll just take the uh, tape off of that one actually and it's good taking the tape off and that nice crisp edge well, the colors are quite nice on that actually that um the orange works well with just that little bit of blue and the, the purple you know we've got the purple here as well so it's nice sort of graded um part to the water there and has a feel of light um but again just very simply painted you know that the buildings aren't correct at all but um you know this one was fairly accurate so you know that's enough that's what made me want to paint it was this building here so so there we go that's that one Hopefully we can do this one without interruptions. Let's change my reference picture over. So. There we go. That's the the next one, which is uh, Elan Valley in uh, Wales. That um, we've uh, stayed there in the camper van quite a few times, Kate and I. But um, when we're in the UK, so this one here, um, it's about the the bridge really. 
And this paper, Chris, is 9 by 12 inch, this one. And so I'll do a video to show you how to cut um, the full sheets. I cut them, I think I can get three 9 by 12s, or four actually, four 9 by 12s, and a couple of 8 by 10s out the same sheet without um, any waste, really. So I'll do a video. That'll be my, my next job. So when you do your painting it's always good to think of you now why are you painting this it's the the sort of the distant hills that appeal to me and the the bridge with the archways the rest of it you know doesn't not to be you no know, not that important really so we've got the water going through there so there's the bridge which you know, is quite important to get that looking good we've got three archways Again, it's a loose watercolour, so if they're not perfect, that's why. And then we've got these buildings here, which we can just keep those nice and simple, because simple always works better. Took me a long time to figure that out. So just a basic house shape and when you look at master paintings that you know we'll you know appreciate and love they've been painted simply you know very rarely they may look complex but if you really look at them you know that they haven't you know they've just painted what's necessary and that's you know what makes a, a master painting in my eyes so there's one building there and then the other one over here which again just basic shape there's a perspective to take into account but again i'll use my loose watercolor excuse but um yeah, i'll get it fairly fairly accurate hopefully so there we go but you know sometimes you know, having stuff a little bit quirky can actually you know make it quite nice but um and we've all seen paintings where they've painted every brick and so on and it just doesn't have that same kind of a loose appeal to it so there we go so this has got to be painted the sky and then straight into the distant blue hill and then i'll just gradually build up the tone darker and darker and darker until we get to the foreground um, and this will have the most detail probably here in the with the some bushes or something there maybe but um, these buildings don't need any detail really just a, a little suggestion so let's just get rid of that line there and let's just soften that one a little bit so one of those off, a couple of those off. So we'll start with some yellow ochre again, but uh, maybe let's we try a different colour palette maybe. Maybe we'll try and put some red in there because I always do the same thing at the moment. So let's just go for a uh, bit of red in there. Go for it. it's the sunset so try and uh, tell the story so keep the sky fairly light and now straight into a distant blue hill because we want a soft edge and this is really wet so i'll get a really soft edge so, there we go and maybe we'll use that to paint the water so this is just going to be a bit of dry brush that will be enough to create that illusion of flowing water so, so with watercolor you've always got to be thinking how to paint it so there we go and back into i've got a bit of a funny hard edge there so let's just try and Disguise that. So there we go. It'll either be a mess or it won't. A bit of 
Lime Crimson. Try and perhaps get some of that pinky colour. So let it paint wet into wet. Again, I had no idea I was going to paint this. Certainly wasn't going to be using pink colours, but um, why not? So all these other buildings down here, I'm just not going to paint them. So just disappear off around there. So bigger brush, but um, that's also something that will help your painting by using the brush, which is appropriate for the size of what you're doing. So this is a large area here. So and let's paint it into there, let it mix on the paper. Let's say there's a million trees there, which I know we're already behind schedule tonight because of the technical issues. So I haven't got time to paint all those trees. So we'll just treat it as a one big shape. But again, that will look a lot better, hopefully, than painting a million trees. It would just look busy and overworked. So let's have the sun hitting the side of that building there and there we can connect that bridge up because the sun's also now going to hit that bridge so this is all painted itself which is great and let's get some blue in there mix on the paper and this is quite far away here so it doesn't need much in the way of detail, if any. So I'll just go back to the smaller brush. Maybe a bit of burnt umber, a bit of red, a bit of blue. And let's just put some few darks along the bank here. So you know you need some definition that um, if it's too wishy-washy, that's what it would be, wishy-washy. So some directional marks, maybe keep the eye coming down here and maybe even have a crisp edge up there. And to paint like this, you know, I couldn't have done this years ago when I was learning to paint. Um, you just got to paint a lot of watercolours and you know, a lot of bad watercolours. I've got hundreds. Well, I haven't got many more because I've painted over them or uh, bin them, whatever. But, you know, I did thousands of watercolours, which were total rubbish. Um, but at the time I was quite proud of them and uh, you know because they were better than my last one and that's it with water, you know, painting or anything you do really in life you're only competing against yourself that um, you know we all look at Instagram and Facebook and see you know these fantastic artists but uh, you know should never compare yourself to what they're doing because you know we're only comparing ourselves to ourselves. So. Just add a little bit of water there just to soften that. And I'll put a bit of blue in here, wet into wet. It needs to be a little bit darker here. And I need to sort that bridge out. As I say, when you need some kind of definition, if it's too loose everywhere, you know, it doesn't uh, always work. So as long as we get the archways looking uh, reasonable, we'll be good. Bridge, you can just suggest. You can just suggest a reflection there, but it's such choppy water. But I've got too many hard edges there, so I'll just use some water just to let that uh, mix on there and just mess it up a little bit. Again, a combination of hard and soft edges, bring some of that warmth down into that water. So we can now work on this area here. That's certainly going to be a colourful painting. I don't remember it being like that, the Elan Valley. It was uh, raining, I think, when we went. So more of those warm colours. Red's looking nice tonight. That's sort of Lazarin Crimson. And it's dried up here to a certain degree, so we should get um, 
and some harder edges but this is in the foreground here now so it's so it's still a little bit damp so we'll get a bit of softness there and just paint around that house so even these big brushes you can have a bit of control and just create that illusion of long grass and so on and connect it up and then maybe a touch of yellow make a real green green so what that's like tap into that Back to the smaller brush so we need a little bit of detail in here um, but I'll just paint the side of those houses while we're waiting for that to to dry so these are stone houses there but because I'm painting wet into wet here I'm going to worry about how to anchor them to the ground and so on they're just going to fade away to nothing yeah we'll have a window there not quite sure what to do with the, uh, the rooftops yet. So, again, same with those. Maybe negative paint the windows. And maybe I could just suggest a couple of trees here because you know it needs something there just to stop the eye wandering off the page and just to perhaps lose the side of the building there but again i could you know put more trees in here but then i'd lose that lovely sort of wash there so that's probably enough so before this dries let's just throw some paint on with a bit of green and just make a mess you know, there's horrible cauliflowers that we all try to avoid Let's see if we can make some on here. Let's see what that does. So some stronger paint. So we've got um we need some detail, so maybe just a few longer bits of grass here where i've got some dry paper so if i watercolor will actually help you out that uh, you know there's some dry paper there so i'll put the long grass there and same here you know there's a bit of dry paper so a bit of detail there so everything else is soft here i'll wait for that to to dry uh, we've got uh, lots of people joining from all over the world tonight, which is nice to, to see. So I appreciate everyone watching this live. And um, I will have a uh, an edited version at some point. So that will be on Patreon um, as well. So let's dry that off. Before that fully dries I'm just going to throw some water on it now it is kind of dry because what will happen is it will lift the paint off and make these cauliflowers that I tried to do first off so not too many and then we'll dry that
all I need now is just some paint to put on the rooftops there, which I think probably um, the blue that I've got in the distance there, so that's cerulean blue, will will work, and that will unify the uh, the painting. So just need a a wash on there. Maybe just a touch of red on this side, so they look different to to that side. Have a look to see, you know, does it need anything else to it done to it that um, maybe a couple of darks, but the option is I could put a darker bush in here, but then you would sacrifice losing this nice sort of part that's painted itself. Um, so I think I probably would uh, just just leave it at that and uh, sort of to go for sort of capturing that, um, you know, the, the river and the atmosphere. You know, the reason I painted it is because I wanted to capture that distant hill disappearing off into the sky um, and the bridge. Um, which we've got the bridge there. It's you know it's kind of been painted wet into wet, and uh, it's done all sorts of stuff here. But it's connected to that, to that, to that. You know, so there's connection all the way through. So I think we'll leave it at that. Let's take the tape off. Yeah, and it's got um, colour harmony, but um, I suppose you could say it's a pink painting. But um, you know, I tend to use yellow ochre and the blue a lot. Painting. So let's switch to the other camera. So that was the the first one there. Get that so you can see it. There we are. So yeah, I would say that's kind of a, a yellow and blue painting, but um, but again, quite nice and soft in the background. So you know, it makes you know, this water almost becomes a focal point. Nice still water. You know, it didn't make too much of the reflections, but um, you know, you probably would see more of that building in there. But uh, you know, I've gone for not sacrificing the uh, the nice uh, fresh freshness to it, and then. The second one there, which is kind of a sort of pink painting, if you can see it. Um, so again, you've got some nice sense of distance there with the uh, the very sort of blurred mounting in the background, and then the sharper detail here in the foreground. So that works quite well. So thanks everyone for joining me this evening. Apologies for the technical details, but hopefully. Um, it was okay when I changed those settings, um, but I'll look into that um, to make sure I've got the right settings. And um, hopefully the quality of the, the videos will improve because um, I'll be able to have higher definition on um, my videos with this new computer. So I've got, I upgraded the cameras and so on a long time ago, but it was the computer that was not up to scratch, but I hope that's sorted. But there's not a lot I can do about my internet connection that, um, we're out in rural France here, and um, you know, there's uh, not very good internet. So I'm using Starlink, um, which is good, um, but the upload speeds are not particularly high, but obviously fast enough for streaming if I've got the right settings. So, so there you go. Let's um, just check your comments. But uh, thanks for your uh, comments there. That uh, yeah, no problem. Enjoy doing the demos, and uh, it's really good to have your feedback and your comments. That it really helps the um, the channel grow as well. That uh, it wasn't long that I was ex celebrating 10,000 subscribers, but we're heading now towards 12,000. So uh, it's all good. So I shall keep painting, and um, I'll see you again soon. So bye for now, and good luck with your watercolors.